First item, apologies for absence. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Gilward, I'm subbing for, thank you. For those, we move on to the second item, item two, re record of the minutes. Those who were present, is it okay if I sign the minutes as has been correct? Excellent. It's obvious um, that we have a lot of new members, right? So there are 16 members of this committee, 10 are recently elected, uh, new to this uh, committee. As one returning uh, councillor does have some history about planning, that's uh, Councillor Jones. So I think we've got to see how we go, tread carefully, because uh, I, what I'm expecting is a lot of people to be asking lots of questions, and uh, because there's a, we're on a big learning curve. So, um, urgent matters of reason of special circumstances. I don't believe there are any. No. Sorry. So, on the uh, supplementary agenda, there are, it's circulated, there are four deferrals. That's items six, items nine, ten, and eleven. So deferral to, for item 6, 9, 10 and 11, they will not be considered tonight. Any, any uh, disposal between the interests or other significant interests? I have one to start with. Um, um, item uh, that, uh, 12 is a, is a recorded interest. It's my place of work. I shall be... Um, leaving the room, and the uh, vice chair will be chairing the meeting for that item. Councillor Pearce. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm a member of Hoon Chatham and Parish Council who have sent in a representation to item number seven. Um, I've also submitted a representation as ward councillor on item number seven as well, so I'll be leaving the room on that item. And also, um, Councillor Sands has been taken ill, so he can't present as ward councillor but he has emailed um, the head of planning if, if it would be most grateful if that could be read out in the meeting if possible. He's sent it uh, literally, let's have a look, I think he's copied me in. Uh, 21 minutes past to yourself. Yeah, I'm copied in, yeah. Um, chairman, I'm I haven't got a copy in front of me. Um, if members will allow me, I will go to my, my, my office and get, a, and get a copy to read out. Yes? Because I've got a... If you can send it on to me. Yep, Is that I'll possible? do that now. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Pearce. Sorry, Stephen. Thanks, okay, Chairman, sorry. For item five, I won't be participating in it, but I will be speaking as a ward member. Thank you. Okay, so we move to item five, uh, which is uh, the tennis club, uh, Lee Glebe Road, Gillingham. Jim, and thank you very much. Welcome, members, to, uh, to the first planning committee of this, uh, this new administration. <coughs> um, Avenue Tennis Club actually has quite an extensive history. Um, 
And what I will do is through the presentation, I will talk you through that planning history so that you can understand where we are now in terms of our officer recommendation um, on this one. So this is the application site um, with access off of Second Avenue. And then you've got First Avenue here, Glebe Road there. You will see from this, this plan that there's quite a mix of development around the area. So we have some terrace properties, we have some detached properties, we have some terrace properties fronting on Glebe Road, but then some flats, which are in the, uh, the, the back of the site just here. And then we have this, um, some uh, detached properties fronting First Avenue. And this is the former tennis club uh, uh, in, um, in the back here. That tennis club moved to, the, um, to Featherby Road, to, to a much grander facility there a few years back. So an aerial view just explaining those, um, what, I've, what I've explained there. So you'll see in Second Avenue, you have got some longer gardens here, but you've also got some shorter gardens around, around these areas. And then you've got the flats here with their, the, the, the area to the back, just there. So some photographs of the site. This is the entrance off of Second Avenue. And then looking down through into the site towards those flats. And then looking back towards Second Avenue. And again, as we get into the site, you can see that work has, uh, the, the, the site has started to be cleared a little bit. And as we look around, there are the properties at the back of Glead Avenue. So that's the, the terraced properties, and the flats are just, just in there, which is there. And then we're looking back towards the rear of properties in First Avenue, which are mostly detached. There are those flats in Glebe Road. And then there are the rear of the properties in Second Avenue ones with the, the slightly shorter gardens. And then if I, if I go back, sorry, just in terms of orientation, look at the dormer there, because that's that dormer there. And you can see these are the longer rear gardens which go along um, the side. And you can see the, 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 uh, the tree growth which goes along those boundaries. So, members, your planning history, which is set out on page on, on, in your report, um, on pages 33 on to 34, but also in terms of the officer's appraisal, in terms of the consideration of these, that's on pages 37 on to page 38. So this was the first application back in 2018, which was for eight dwellings, and you can see how it was laid out. So the access coming in from Second Avenue car parking to the, to the back of, the, of that property, coming round, and then you had the properties fronting onto the new road with their backs facing towards the existing terrace in here, side on to the side gardens, to the longer side gardens here, then backing on and facing towards um, the properties in, in First Avenue, and then two properties just in there facing towards, uh, with their rears facing towards uh, the properties in Glee, Glebe Road. That application was refused. Um, it went to appeal, and you'll see on page 37 on, in the italic section the reasons why that application was refused. Um, the inspector accepted the access the, and, the, uh, and the transport issues, absolutely fine on those. He accepted the principle of development. But what he said was, nevertheless, notwithstanding all of that, because of the small back gardens, I consider that proposed development is too cramped for the site. I also find that notwithstanding the, oh sorry, the townhouses here, sorry, not flats, the townhouses there, notwithstanding the four recently constructed townhouses to the rear of Glebe Road, the introduction of two three-storey dwellings will be very dominant and incongruous and thus harmful to the character and appearance of the area. So he dismissed that appeal. We then moved on to 2019 and the application was changed to seven dwellings, two storeys in height, but you'll see how the, the development was reorientated. So the properties were facing in this way, providing for larger gardens, facing towards these large gardens of properties in Second Avenue, side on to the smaller gardens of First Avenue, the smaller gardens of, of, of Second Avenue in there, and then removing the three-storey element. Now that application was recommended for approval, but refused by the planning committee. Uh, that went to appeal, and again, the inspector there accepted the highways um, uh, issue, the access, the principle of development. Again, all of that was accepted, but he dismissed the appeal um, for the reasons set out on the bottom of page 37. 
And that was respect to plot one, plot four, and plot five, which is this one here. And the, the fact that there were two stories quite close to the boundaries, here, 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 and he felt that that would, um, with only limited landscaping, that that would result in a cramped appearance to the, uh, to the, to the development. And, then he, and as a result, he dismissed the appeal. So then we get on to two further applications, which then came in um, more recently in 2020 and 2021. Um, the first one here was for seven dwellings. And you'll see what they did is that they set it off the boundary there. So you've got that hedge landscape treatment coming through there, movement of the property away from here. Also the movement of, of, the, of this property away from that boundary. Removal of any property in this area here. And then three properties in here, one detached and a pair of semi-detached properties uh, in there. That was recommended for approval to this committee and was refused. Shortly after that, the applicants appealed that decision but they, and they also submitted a further application, but for six dwellings. Um, now that showed three dwellings on this side as opposed to four there. It had a garage in here, a garage in there, and set them further off those, those, those boundaries there. Still no property in this area here. That application was also refused and, that, and those two went to appeal. Now you will see from the planning history that those appeals were heard by way of an informal hearing and they were allowed. So these two developments could be constructed tomorrow. And members need to consider that uh, in their deliberations of the changes now in the current application. So what is currently proposed now? This is the scheme for seven houses that was allowed on appeal. And as I said, that could be built tomorrow. The difference is these four here remain to all intents and purposes unchanged from what was allowed on appeal. These three here remain to all intents and purposes unchanged from what was allowed on appeal. The changes relate to this area just in here. So there's some changes there to the access to get to, the, to, 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 the, to these two parking spaces in there, so in terms of access, two further parking spaces just in there, which is just in here, and then the provision of a bungalow in that area there, where previously an inspector had concerns over a house. The current scheme is for a bungalow. So the issues from, that members need to focus on in terms of determining the application tonight are whether those changes in relation to that aspect only are acceptable or whether they are unacceptable. And that's what members need to focus on. Access, previously being considered. Principal, previously being considered and accepted. Four houses here, previously being considered and accepted. Three houses here, previously being considered and accepted. So the only difference relates to that area there. So in terms of these are the houses which have pre previously been approved. And this is the bungalow which is now proposed. Now, from an officer point of view, if I can scroll back, the previous concern by the inspector of a two-storey house here and its proximity to these townhouses there, we feel that this scheme sets it more off the boundary. It's also a bungalow with a hipped roof. We can remove permitted development rights for any extensions within to, to, to the outside of the property or within the roof space um, to control that development. So we feel that in terms of the inspector's concerns on a bungalow, on a house, a property in that location have been addressed through the provision of a bungalow rather than a house. And on that basis, Chairman, we're recommending approval with the conditions as set out. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stamps requested to speak. Uh, would you allow to permit to speak? Please. Okay. Good evening, thank you Chair. This is the fifth planning application that has been submitted for the former Avenue Tennis Courts. 
The first application was for eight four-bedroom dwellings, which was refused by this planning committee. The planning application was then appealed to the Secretary of State, where the appeal was dis dismissed. The second planning application submitted was for seven four-bedroom dwellings. The application was refused by this planning committee. An appeal was submitted to the Secretary of State and was dismissed again. The third application submitted on the former Avenue Tennis site was for four three-bedroom and three four-bedroom dwellings. The fourth application submitted to Medway Council was for three three-bedroom and three four-bedroom dwellings. This planning committee yet again refused both of these planning applications. The applicant appealed both of these applica uh, planning applications and the Secretary, Secretary of State allowed the appeals. This fifth application is for eight dwellings, which the first application was for, which was refused by this planning committee and on appeal to the Secretary of State. I therefore ask that this planning application is refused. The approval of the previous two applications is already over, de over development of the land. The development effectively amounts to backland development or garden grabbing, as a development is being facilitated by the part demolition of an existing residential property with inadequate access and egress from the site. The last two applications of one appeal are already going to cause a significant increase in noise levels. These dwellings are literally being built in the back gardens of the surrounding properties. There is also a road going through the development which will increase noise levels even more with cars going to and from the properties. The two applications that have been allowed by the Secretary of State are already cramped and overbearing, in my opinion. The proposed garden sizes are very small and not in keeping with the character of the area. To add another dwelling to this piece of land will make it even more cramped and overbearing. It is excessive and constitutes an overdevelopment of the site, in my opinion. Parking was already at a premium on 2nd Avenue and the surrounding area. The proposed development make the existing parking problems even worse. And 2nd Avenue is an increasingly busy residential area which is being used more and more as a rat run. Cars are parked on both sides of the road, leaving just a single lane thoroughfare for vehicles despite it being a two-way street. The cramped on-street parking situation all mean, also means there is very poor visibility for vehicles turning into and out of the existing junctions with Keeley Mews, Portry Mews, Ashburn Mews and Glebe Road. The new access to the proposed development will have no clear sight lines. This poses an unacceptable additional road safety risk. For these reasons, I ask that this application is refused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Stamp. Uh, before I go to members, I'm going to ask the, uh, Mr Harris just to quickly talk about appeals. Who is the planning inspectorate? What is an appeal? And the consequences of uh, going to a further appeal? Chairman, thank you very much. Um, members, as you will be aware or recall from the training that, uh, that myself and Vicky uh, Nutley gave, um, any decision that this council makes it, um, can be challenged. A refusal or, a, or an approval with conditions can be the subject of an appeal. Now, that appeal goes to an independent body, which is known as the Planning Inspectorate, um, and they would send an inspector from outside of this area. So this is someone who cannot have any... Uh, any rele relevance to Medway at all. They've got to be someone who is completely um, neutral uh, uh, to this. That inspector will come, to the, um, will look at the, uh, the site, will consider all the representations received, including the council's comments, including the applicant's comments, and will make a decision. And as you know from the, um, uh, from the, from the training, that could be written representations appeal, exchange of written statements, an informal hearing gathered round a table with an inspector chairing a debate, which is the last, uh, the last appeals um, were heard in that way, or a public inquiry. Something of this scale would not normally be considered at a public inquiry. Now, one of the reasons the chairman has asked me to, 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 to comment on this is that costs can be awarded against either side if they behave unreasonably. Now, that unreasonable behaviour could be um, the applicant um, just um, not responding ap appropriately to, um, uh, to, to previous appeal decisions. 
Similarly, it could be awarded against the council if we've acted unreasonably and not considered previous appeal decisions. And in that respect, that relates to the presentation that I gave. And I completely understand the, presenta uh, the, 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 the uh, presentation or the discussion from, from Councillor Stamp that reflects the comments from her constituents. But what I would stress here, members, is if you were to refuse an application on anything other than the issue of that bungalow in here, i.e. if you were to raise highway issues regarding car parking, visibility issues, car parking on the site, the layout of these four or layout of these three or the garden sizes of them, if you were to refuse any application on those grounds, you would lose an appeal and you would lose with costs. You must focus on what is different from the previous appeal decision, which is that bungalow there and the parking spaces in here. Thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Wanted uh, that explanation because it's we're essentially looking at one small element of the planning application, e.g., the bungalow. Um, anybody wishes to speak? Councillor Lewis. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just a question for clarity. So, is it the case that if the 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 one without the bungalow has already got the green light? They've come back again and they want an extra bungalow. If we refuse the one with the extra bungalow, will they just build the same thing without the bungalow? Chairman, yes, absolutely. This scheme here, without the bungalow, they could start building tomorrow. So in this circumstance, they won't necessarily go to appeal because they'll just go, okay, we'll build it without the bungalow. Is that not the case? In your opinion. They, they, they would have a choice. They could decide whether they, they, um, they would just build a scheme they got a, a, approval for, or they could take us to appeal again um, on the basis that they, they want that extra bungalow because it, it, it gives them a greater value for, for, the, for, for the site. So it will be their decision as to whether they appeal or build what they've got consent for. Okay, thank you. Councillor Pierce, if you turn your mic off. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you only turn it on when you try it, does. Thank you. Um, I'm looking over to the upper bench. Yeah, okay. Uh, Councillor Galvin. Thank you, Chair. So what we're looking at is, will there be significant harm caused by the addition of one bungalow onto this scheme? I would contend that the disturbance from that would be so slight that the warning that Mr. Harris has given us as far as to the consequences um, will come home. I, in addition, I would like to, uh, to say that this type of um, dwelling is now becoming extremely short in, in supply in Medway. Regrettably, because bungalows tend to be on larger plots, it's been very tempting for people to convert bungalows in, into houses. It's happened to probably every ward in this borough. We have got an elderly, an increasingly elderly population. We've got an increasing amount of people with disabilities in our communities. They are in quite desperate need of one story bungalow type of accommodation. Their op chances of getting that type of accommodation here in Medway is getting slimmer and slimmer as time goes on. So to me, that would be a significant plus factor that we've got a type of accommodation that is suitable uh, for our population, albeit one is not many, but it, 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 every little bit helps. And when you consider the top type of people that will more than likely move into that will be either elderly or disabled people chance of disturbance from that property I think will be uh, pretty small. So I think on balance, to me, having an extra bungalow far outweighs any, any extra disturbance to, to the area. So for me, uh, it's quite clear I think we should support this. Thank you, Councillor Galvin. I, I was missing your comments about bungalows been quiet about it for the last four years. 
Um, it's nice to return to the theme. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'm looking down. Councillor. Uh, hmm? Thank you. Sorry. Yeah, new to all this, so yeah, um, I thought I'd make a comment. Um, from my perspective, I'm not sure if it's the right one, but if it's been refused by us a couple of times, uh, I'm not sure what new body of evidence, obviously, the uh, pills uh, panel look at to approve it eventually. But from from that initial disapproval of these properties, it seems like there was great concern about how much more properties in that, especially from my understanding how many more properties in that area have been been developed in an already quite tight congested place so I, I concur with yourself and now we do need um, more homes for people with disabilities the elderly but I think that's more related to having like a, 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 a the Medway plan some some a much more planned uh, approach to that than just cramming it in in any anywhere we, we can find so it seems like this might not be one of those answers, but I agree, we do need that at some stage, somewhere. Just to make way, you only turn the microphone on when you're about to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I understand the new system is going to be so much better. Um, Councillor Pierce. Um, yeah, I've got a, really a question and then a comment. Um, so the question is, this green square, as proposed at the moment, what is the purpose of that? Is that like amenity space for the residents which are going to move in, like a nice grassy area? Um, and then the comment is that basically this is an application to build on that square, to build a bungalow on that square. Um, so we have, if we wish to, ref to raise objection to it, we need to raise objection to building on that amenity green space which has already got permission by appeal. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah, we're just simply looking at one small part of the site, just one additional building. Okay. Uh, Councillor Hamish. Thank you. Um, my only question is in terms of, and I do understand it, and I do, do agree with the sentiments from across the bench there, but my question is more to do with moving away from assumptions in terms of the context of what this property is going to be used for it's all well and good us speculating or if it's somewhere else in the document you have to forgive me about that one um ideally yes it could be used for older people they do require that type of accommodation but equally so the needs of older people need to be in a safe environment as well not shoehorned in any any um patchwork type of arrangement they do have considerations to their own access needs as well and if indeed the threshold was achieved and it was an upper limit and it was agreed, okay, you're gonna have seven dwellings in there, additional dwelling will then exceed that, as my colleague to my right has also indicated as well. So that's just my, my comment there. Thank you, Chairman. For members who don't know me, my name is Gary Etheridge. I'm the councillor for Strood Rural. Um, I'm one of the few that actually came across from the last part of the administration and sat on this planning committee and contributed to refusing this a number of times, primarily because at the time we thought it was overdevelopment and a cramped uh, situation, which was agreed by the inspector. All we have here with this additional bungo in an amenity space that was approved by the inspector is a ploy yet to get eight uh, properties back onto the same site. Regardless of size, there are eight properties now being attempted to get it back on the same site. In addition to that, as you've read, you all read through your papers, you'll see they still haven't arranged for the proper drainage for the entire site. So that's still outstanding. So I don't think I can uh, support this uh, proposal for this evening and I'm more than happy for the developer to go ahead with what they've got with the existing uh, plan for seven. Thank you. Okay. Councillor um, Esraf. Uh, yes, hello. <laughs> so I just wanted to make a comment. The first time the plan was rejected, I think uh, uh, Mr. Harris mentioned that uh, 
There was lack of garden space. <laughs> Chairman, thank you very much. If I go back to the to the to the, to the yeah, first appeal yeah. for for eight houses, um, that was refused by the inspector in terms of cramped appearance. Yeah. Um, you know, all two story with some three story um, in there. So three story here, two story there. The, the, the inspector felt that short gardens proximity to the to the boundary uh, that would appear as a cramped appearance. Yes. So now basically the new property that is proposed won't have garden at all. First of all, no, no. The uh, the 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 property here will have a garden to the rear, just in here. So that's its garden to the side, okay. and to the rear, just in there. And the community space for the other property, a green area when you can play with your kids and just relax. Especially in in this day and age when stress is such a big factor for everyone, will be gone. Chairman, the councillor is right. The communal space. There, that's the communal space within the approved scheme. There'll be no communal space, mm -hmm. but each of the properties will still benefit from their own rear, their own rear garden. Okay. And that's the same with, uh, with the proposed property. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I also have um, concerns with the lack of amenity for this site. I think as we've, you know, address that it there has been issues with regards to this being a sort of a backyard development and uh, cramming in in properties and i think the the developer has kind of been testing the way with regards to what um can be allowed on that site um and it seems sort of six or seven is okay but possibly eight not okay um so you know we, we've got a lot of debate this evening on potentially just on one bungalow um going in there um but i think that area because of this sort of development of the the out the outer you know when you look at second avenue and what's around is actually quite important to, to that um this small scheme here um but sort of a question that i had if if the the concerns previously with the house being there and that being dismissed at appeal was um, it being sort of cramped into that area, and I and I think because of the proximity to the terrace houses, I think you said, didn't you? Um, and I assume that's perhaps with overlooking and stuff. And obviously, a bungalow wouldn't do that. But I'm just concerned about the other way around that those terrace properties would be overlooking this bungalow. And I, I don't know if that's something that's been looked at or addressed. Chair, Chairman, thank you. Um, Good point from Councillor uh, 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 Turpin. The inspector didn't refuse it in terms of, of, of overlooking of these properties into the garden of the, of the house that was previously proposed. The concern was in relation to a, to a, house, a house here, relatively short gardens, um, and looking out onto to, to a two-storey property um, there uh, uh, effectively. So that's, one of the re that's the reason why they felt that, or one of the reasons why it was refused in terms of development. Okay, anybody, any other councillor wish to speak? Okay. Um, so my comments upon this, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's balanced application. Uh, taking note of the previous uh, refusals and, and uh, winning at a, appeal, and the fact that we're only essentially looking at one small element to the site, um, I am content to go along with the uh, recommendation as laid out. Um, it's not our deal. But I feel that if uh, refusal was given, then the likelihood is that we would lose at an appeal and uh, lose a considerable amount of costs as well. So that's my personal view. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do is that we'll do this every time, is I'll go to, to the vice, cha uh, vice chair, who in this case is going to be Mr. Mark Jones, Councillor Jones, and he's going to move the recommendation as laid out. If that's not supported, then we'll go for something else. Thank you, Jones. Chair. I, I move approval on the basis of conditions 1 to 19 as set out in the report. So, those in favour? That's six, Chairman. Those against? That's a greater number. That's nine, Chairman. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to, this is um, now if this, so we're going to need to have a, so those in favor of refusal um, for, we're going to need to determine, I, I sorry. Right. A refusal for the, for the, this uh, application. Councillor Leverage. Thank you, Chairman. Because the refusal for this application is it's reverting to the original application of eight dwellings, therefore making sure that this particular is of a cramped uh, nature by adding in the additional dwelling as opposed to the ones that's all been already been approved by inspector. Chairman, thank you. I, I, the, um, a refusal, as I understand it, a refusal would be on, based on the uh, development, sorry, the proposal being an overdevelopment of the site relating in a, cr a cramped form of development. Should we add something about the loss of immunity uh, for in advisors? The, 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 sorry, uh, Chairman. The, 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 the previous inspector didn't really make didn't make a point about that being a communal air, air area. It was about the, the all the inspectors have considered the issue of whether it's a cramped form of development in terms of the built form. Um, I uh, my my advice to members, and you know, it's your decision at the end of the day, would be to stick to it being you, your consideration being a cramped form of development rather than bringing in the communal. Uh, the, the, the loss of that communal space. That's my view. It's your decision. So I'll, I'll go for the crowd. Just to say, in uh, when you appeal terms, it's easier to have one strong refusal than several refusals and one being weak. So just having one is is okay. If it's strong enough, then we will. Uh, uh, succeed. Um, so, what I'm going to do is ask the um, vice chair or temporary vice chair to move refusal uh, for the grounds that will be uh, given by uh, Mr. Harris. Uh, chair, I move refusal of the application on the grounds set out by the borough planning officer. And I second that, chairman. And what we do, we'll, the, the actual final wording of the uh, uh, refusal will be agreed between, between normal channels, which is the spokes, in other words, myself, the vice chair, and the uh, uh, spokes of uh, the conservative group and the independent group. So the recommendation is refused, the item is refused. Do a vote, yeah. Well, those in favour of the refusal, please. Those against. I'm going against. Okay. Whoops. The refusal is approved. And as I said, the, the normal wording uh, of the actual recommendation will come to the next committee in the minutes, but it will be dis um, uh, um, agreed upon uh, between the, the four spokes. So moving to item uh, seven, just now Councillor appears to have time to remove himself from the room. Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. Members, this application is not a planning application. This is an application for a lawful development certificate. So you can't consider this in terms of its impact on amenity or bring in those normal balance things that you would do with a planning application. It's a matter of law. Does this application constitute permitted development? I Can it take place without the need for planning permission. The report is very clear on that. Now this is the, uh, the library in, in here. 
So that whole building there is the library and then the car park is, is there. This is the older part of the building. This is the newer part. This is a very important grade one listed church and that's where the concerns of the parish council come from. And if this was a, a, a planning application, I would have a lot more sympathy with what the parish council are saying. So the proposal is for um, roof mounted solar pho photovoltaic system. So on that elevation of the roof and that elevation of the roof, wish to put these photovoltaic. And the question is, do they require planning permission? Now your report is very clear here in terms of what can be done without requiring planning permission. Now, this, uh, this, um, these photos, I think, help greatly because it's, that's the old part of the, of the library. This is the newer flat roof part. The photovoltaic will go along that roof space there and that roof space there. The reason they're on those elevations is that south facing. So that's where they'll get the sunlight to generate the electricity or to, or to, or, or to make the, um, the, the system work. You can see that they're not on the modern part. And on that basis, they are at the furthest point they can be from the grade one listed church. You also have these, um, these trees in here. Now, members, you'll see there in terms of what can be, what, what can be done without requiring planning permission. It goes through it very carefully through the report here in terms of what is permitted development under class A, Part 14, Renewable Energy. Um, installation, alteration, replacement of micro-generation solar thermal equipment on a building. And then it sets out um, certain criteria here which this scheme adheres to. The solar panels do not project more than 0.2 metres beyond the plane of the roof. The solar panels would not be higher than one metre above the highest part of the roof. The solar panels will be installed... Um, one metres from the external ridge of the roof. The site is not located in a conservation area. The site is not a scheduled ancient monument. The site is not on a listed building or in the curtilage of a listed building. So it fulfils all of those requirements and it would not be installed on an external wall. And the solar panels would not exceed one megawatt. So in terms of all of those criteria, it, it is compliant. The, se the second part um, is about whether the, uh, the solar panels have been sited as far as practical so as to minimise its effect on the external appearance of the building and the amenity of the area. In my view, this putting solar panels on the, the rear, sorry, the south elevations here, in the, the furthest point away from, um, from, from the church, they have met that requirement, i.e. as far as practicable, practicable, they have minimised the effect on the building and the amenity of the area. On that basis, members, the solar panels do not require planning permission. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, just to make it clear, item six has been deferred. Um, okay, so... Councillor Sands was going to speak as a ward member, um, but he can't be here tonight. Um, Councillor Sands is also the chair of the parish council. Chairman, thank you. And apologies that I'm reading um, across you here. Um, this proposal, this proposal will impact directly the visual aspect when entering, or more especially when leaving the Grade One listed village church next door. Picture, if you will, a delightful wedding in an historic building and to exit the church to be met with a vast barrage of glass glaring through the trees and, the, and then again it will have a visual aspect of the very close by Grade 2 listed war memorial. This church and village itself dates back to King Edward, the confessor, around the 12th century and is mentioned in the Doomsday Book 
and the walls built of Kentish ragstone and its oldest bell in the bell tower dates back to 1588. And the pioneering engineering and inventor Thomas Aveling is buried just 60 yards, 60 yards from the library. So a truly historic building. In the supporting statement 3.42, it mentions it will not be installed on a listed building or within the curtilage of a listed building. And I argue this is not true. It would impact on the area of the church of a grade one listed building next door. In 3.4.3, it states to be cited to minimize its external appearance on the building and the amenity of the area once again. I believe this is not true. The sighting of these solar panels would distract from this area. I think the NPPF, National Planning Policy Framework, paragraphs one point, uh, sorry, 194, 195 and 2001 also come into play on this occasion. The library building itself, once the prim village primary school, which I believe it if it wasn't for the new library extension completed two years ago, would now also be a listed building. We protect listed buildings, rightly so, and especially grade one listed buildings, which account for just 2.5% of listed buildings, and as such, the curtilage of a grade one building should be pr uh, preserved, and I believe that, but, but the area around our listed buildings should also have protection because they complement each other. Members, I would just say th the library is not a listed building. It's not within the curtilage of a listed building. And I, I reiterate um, that this does not require planning permission. The paragraphs in the MPPF do not apply because this is not a planning application. This is a lawful development certificate application and the proposal does not require planning permission. It's lawful. Thank you, members. Okay, open up to anybody who's to contribute. Councillor Garvin. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, putting solar panels on the roof of any building will alter it. That's common sense. But also what's common sense is we are going through a period of climate change. And one of the effects of climate change is more severe weather conditions. And I would contend that those severe weather conditions are likely to do greater damage to the historic fabric of buildings, not only in Medway, but throughout the world, than ever will a few solar panels stuck on their roof. We are, we are either going to take climate change seriously, and I'll remind members that the council did sign up not so long ago to the climate emergency, and that we would take uh, climate considerations in, in to all our activities. Well, this is the op our opportunity to decide whether we want to do that or not. And it's perfect, you know, it's quite simple. You, you either say, right, well, we don't want to do this because it's, it's not gonna look so pretty, or we're, we're gonna take the common sense approach and gradually move away from fossil fuels and, and try and uh, stem the climate emergency that, that's facing us. Pretty clear choice to me. I should say that's what's uh, really uh, available to the committee is actually approval, as it's not a, a planning application. Uh, Councillor Shoka. Yeah, that was most of my question, actually. So the fact it's come to the floor, it, it doesn't need approval from us. So why, why did these come to the floor then, just out of curiosity? As, it's the parish council is a consultee and they requested it. Okay. Um, I have actually spoken with uh, the chair of the parish council, which is Councillor Sands, and suggested that as he's a council of this authority, he can actually speak directly to property services or to the library service or the, the relevant portfolio holders if they want to seek um, an alteration. Um, this is really the wrong format for it to come. Got it. And just on, on that, I, I'll share your sentiments and stuff like that, but I, different from how you're kind of, your party view it, but a couple of solar panels here and there ain't really going to make the difference. It's, it's some big systemic changes that are needed to fight climate change. So whether, whether you believe in those systemic changes is a little bit different from just having a couple of panels on the, on the roof there. Hello, um, I just want to actually agree with uh, Councillor Galvin's um, comments. 
Um, I think, you know, small changes, small adaptations, the ability, obviously the south-facing sites, the ability to get clean energy for a few solar panels to help um, support our estate here is, I think, a worthy um, aim and I support that. I'd also just say on, on, obviously, there was a point in terms of reviewing the setting in comparison to the church next door. I do note that there seems to be some form of telecommunications already present, so I'm not sure how much further detriment visually there will be with uh, if these measures were implemented. Any other member? If not, I'm going to go to the uh, vice chair to move the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I agree with Councillor Goldwyn's comments as well. It is important that we take climate change um, seriously and, you know, people do need to get solar panels. That is important. So I therefore move the recommendation to approve the application as per the recommendation in the supplementary agenda um, for approval. Seconded. Thank you. Those in favour of the... Uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, approval. Recommendation. <laughs> That's 14, Chairman. Excellent. So that's the end of uh, the item, item seven. Yes, if you don't give in. <laughs> The item has uh, been refused, and thank you, Councillor Pearce. Next item is uh, Fleet House, Upper, Upper Road, Upper, and uh, Ms. Gunn is going to do the presentation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, members. Uh, this is an application for... Oh, so I press the right button would help. There we go. This is the site. Um, Fleet House um, off Upner Road in Lower Upner. And this is an application for nine residential units in total, which comprises six flats, which would be at the front of the site here, um, a pair of semi-detached houses, sort of central here, and a detached house, which would be accessed from Galleon Way. I'm going to keep doing this and scrolling the wrong way, aren't I? Right. So this aerial photograph here just shows the location of the site. You will see that there is a structure in place here. This uh, used to be um, the site for the Chatham Rope Company, who are now situated um, across the road in the Upner Depot site over here. I think you can just about see their building down here as well. You can, this is the car park by their building, but their building is now here, so they've relocated into the Upner Depot site, leaving this site vacant, and it has been vacant for a number of years now. Right, so these are photographs of uh, how the site sits today. So this first one here just shows the entrance to the site with what remains um, of uh, Fleet House. Um, you might be able to see a bit clearer as we go into the next um, set of slides, but this is basically effectively the front panels of what was the um, old building. Beyond that is, is pretty much nothing. It's just a metal frame. So the roof has been removed um, due to the, um, asbestos and it was in poor condition. Uh, so the roof is removed, most of the rear is removed, and what remains are these front panels and uh, the metal frame. So here is the entrance into the site. What you can just see here, and you can see better slightly here, is the flank wall to the adjacent terrace of townhouses on on the uh, Upner Road. Um, coming down to the lower site here, you can see the entrance into the application site here with the adjacent entrance into Sycamores, which is the adjacent detached property. And then here you can see this is the front of the site um, and you can see the adjacent terrace that fronts Upner Road. I'm still gonna go the wrong way, look. Anyway, so this is a slightly better um, photographs into the site. So what we can see here is, if you can just make out, this is sort of the metal frame that remains um, and, and sort of the front front panels of the building. And again here, just see that the state of the structure that remains in place. Um, this is the side elevation a little clearer 
of the adjacent terrace, um, you will see that there are a couple of silver birch in place here. What I would like members to note as well is um, the boundary treatment that sits along this side um, of, the, of the site with the trees on the opposite side of the fence panels. So the trees that are in, site, or, um, in situ currently are not within the application site. Um, again, just to show the state of the structure that remains in place, and this photograph here was actually taken from up the road looking through. So you can see again that effectively there is very limited amount of structure remaining and you can see some of the metal frame of the roof there remaining. Uh, these pictures here, are, uh, this, this first one here is taken from Galleon Way, which is where the detached property is to be located. So this is the adjacent uh, house that exists. And you'll see here, there's a structure here, which is sort of an undercroft, which goes into the um, adjacent parking croft. So the application site sits in here for the detached dwelling. This is just taking the second photo from the other side. So this is the undercroft into the parking court. And then that's the adjacent detached property in place. I'll go down to the bottom left now, because this photograph has been taken from within the parking court, looking towards what remains of Fleet House here. And you can see those trees that are the other side of the fence panel. Um, and there is some private garaging within this uh, parking area. And this again is from within the parking court. So this blue doored garage here, this is the flank of that. And this is the flank wall to the detached property on Galleon Way. You can see the undercroft entrance there. Uh, these last two photographs on the end, this top one is taken effectively over the fence, looking back towards um, the fleet house structure of what remains of the fleet house structure. And you can see that the site is pretty much just um, overgrown, but a little bit weedy, but cleared. Um, and then again, this is looking back towards um, the rear of the site. So this would be the sort of the rear gardens of uh, the semi-detached pair, um, just to orientate sort of which way you're looking. So this is a uh, floor plan or a site plan of what is proposed. So I'll just talk you through. This is the main entrance into the site with the six residential flats here, which would be a three-storey building comprising three flats on each side um, of this structure and the, the um, uh, access core um, with front and rear accesses in the, in the centre. So the site carries on then on down into a parking area for, for the flats, providing um, a parking space for each unit and an additional four visitor spaces. Uh, we have cycle store for the flats towards the rear, and then there are refuse storage areas for the flats here. Um, I will just ask members to look at the orientation of these um, flats in relation to this terrace in that the, it's a continuous building line. Um, the next slide shows what has been previously approved on the side, site, so it's, it's just um, helpful to note that this situation. Um, so as we go through into the parking court area here, um, there is then a semi-detached pair proposed towards the rear of the site. Um, each each semi-detached pair has got two parking spaces, um, um, a front area here and then a, a space beyond, um, and they've got private garden areas. And then we've got a detached property proposed on Galleon Way with two car parking spaces at the front and a garage. Um, the difference between this and the next site, um, the previous approved plans you'll see from the next slide. So this was the previous approved plan where we had the flats at the front at a slightly different angle because this triangular area here wasn't actually part of the application site before. We had a much larger area of hard standing at the rear with an amenity space, but and this was a uh, residential unit, which was also the undercroft access for all uh, of these units. So there were seven units proposed, six flats, similar, same number. And there was one residential unit here, but then all seven aspects were um, accessed from this, from the rear, from Galleon Way. So this is the proposed elevations to the flats. Uh, so this is what will be fronting up the road. And you can see how this sits in conjunction with the adjacent property, the adjacent terrace properties. Um, and what this is the um, side elevation for both the flats, which are here, and the semi-detached pair of houses that sits just beyond the car park. Um, and what you can see here is obviously the windows that are proposed within those flats. Here we've got the balconies facing out to the front. Um, and this would effectively be the parking area and amenity space. 
This is an, uh, the rear of the flatted units here, um, looking out onto the amenity space and car parking. And again, the side elevation for the flats and for the semi-detached pair again. And you can see here, this is the um, proposed cycle storage. You can see the refuse storage at the front and the uh, parking area for the properties. Um, again, as a comparison to show you what was previously approved in the 2017 application that's referenced um, on the plans, this was the previous elevations for the six flats fronting up the road. Um, so that just as a sort of comparison in terms of uh, heights with the adjacent property, it's just helpful to see that we've got something very similar um, being proposed now. Slightly different in terms of the design, um, but in not significantly different in terms of bulk scale and character. The proposed semi-detached pair that are located um, beyond the parking court, um, here we have the under sort of the undercroft parking and, and the parking at the front for them both. But this uh, top slide is the uh, top elevation would be the front elevation, and this elevation here is the rear elevation. And what we can see is that in terms of massing, this has been kept down because they've actually got an element here within the roof space, and then the plans for the refuse collection area, which is to be at the front of the flats, is here. It's quite simple and again the cycle storage area just shows that this would be secure cycle storage for the residents of the flat only. In terms of the detached property on Galleon Way, this is um, this uh, unit in the middle here is the detached property and we can see how this sits in relation to the existing undercroft parking and the existing adjacent detached property. Uh, the side elevations and rear elevation of this house and you can see on these floor plans below, there's two car parking spa spaces at the front of the property, as well as a parking space within the garage. This was the previous approved scheme, which, which saw an undercroft entrance um, to, the, to the whole scheme. So in terms of scale and massing, I can uh, just sort of compare the two. What we have here is um, a detached property with a gable frontage and a, a gable fronted garage element, um, similar in height to the adjacent property, what was previously approved was actually a barn end property which was slightly higher than the adjacent with this undercroft parking. So that's hopefully a helpful comparable. Um, just again to refresh now that you've seen all those plans, um, to refresh how this sits within the application site. Um, so again, we've got the uh, proposed six flats which are uh, running in, uh, in accordance with the building line of the existing terrace. We've got the semi-detached pair here and we've got um, the Galleon Way property here. And I think what I'd like to also just point out at this point, at this stage, is the relationship of, of this semi-detached pair um, on the adjacent properties. Um, we've got a, a pair of semi-detached properties on Moat Lane here, which front on to 32 Moat Lane. So these are the front garden accesses, and then you've got the rear gardens to the back. So the semi-detached pair is considered to be significantly um, located to, to, to not be of, of harm to those properties. We've got 32 and 32A um, Moat Lane, which are both detached properties. Again, because of orientation, this property at 32 looks directly out across the, the, the parking court and the garage in. I think we, we acknowledge that that, that that will be visible, but in terms of uh, direct overlooking, there isn't actually direct direct overlooking of any of the gardens. And again, with 32A, this property here currently really looks out over Sycamores more than it will the proposal. Um, Sycamores is a detached property fronting up the road and what we have here is the flank wall of the property. Um, so the front and rear property of this property are unaffected by these, by these proposals. And just as you're discussing the case, I thought this would be a useful slide to put up just so it's a 3D image. So we can see Sycamores here. We can see the properties in, in Moat Lane here and the property in Galleon Way, the parking court, and then the site sits in here. Thank you, Chair. Um, for the reasons set out in the report, uh, recommendation is for approval, um, as this application is considered to be an appropriate location, is of acceptable design, and um, has an acceptable impact on the neighbour properties and sufficient parking provision. Uh, it should also be noted that the uh, bird mitigation contributions have actually already been received in full. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Oh, and then I scrolled again. Thank you. Let's go to uh, <laughs> Councillor Everidge. Thank you, Chairman. In regards to the two semi-detached 
whereabouts were they going to be placed against those trees or the trees coming down? Sorry, through you, Chair. Um, as I can, I can just go back to the photographs, but you'll see in terms of this aerial photograph is historic. Um, in terms of what is left on the site there, there has been over the years um, clearance. Um, trees and shrubs that were in place here are, are not in place anymore. I'll just um, go back to, oh, here we go. These, these, these photographs are probably the clearest. So this is the, um, effectively, the semi-detached pair will sit roughly here um, with the gardens going back towards this back fence here. And then obviously this uh, site is where Fleet House is, which is where the flats will be. Okay, thank you for that clarification. The reason I'm asking is because the two main houses looking back towards the semi-detached have a real concern regarding not their view, but their outlook in terms of what was there previously, what is there now, and what could be there potentially in the future. And not only just the outlook, but also the proximity to their own properties as well. So the concern from both the parish council and the residents is this is slightly an overdevelopment with those two additional properties coming against what was originally approved. And therefore, if possible, I'd like to have this uh, application deferred to allow members to have a site visit so they can actually see for themselves on the ground exactly what this would mean. Thank you. Can we just go, take it back to the overall plan, please? And uh, is a site meeting seconded by anybody? Thank you, Councillor Turpin. Can I just go to Mr Harris to just talk about site meetings? Chairman, thank you very much. Um, members, um, not adverse to, to site visits at all. Um, what I would say, having had lots of discussions with the Chairman and, uh, and, and the spokes and previous administrations, is that site visits need to be carefully considered in terms of only going for a site visit if you feel that a site visit will enable you to see something or gain information which will help you in the consideration of the application which you haven't got through the presentation from my officers. Um, if you feel that you need further information in terms and you feel that that will be achieved through a visit to the site then that's fine you can that, that's a decision for, for, for yourselves. But if you feel that it will make no difference, that you can see all the information you need to from the photographs, we can call up Street View, we can call up Google Earth. Um, if you feel that you've got enough information here, then you should determine the application. Thank you, Chairman. I too don't have a problem with a, a site visit. Um, if it enables the members to be, uh, it's almost like a, a, some kind of formal training to actually understand uh, the, the location, uh, not just of this application, but many others. It's, uh, it's trying to get an, an idea of how things fit into a space. Um, now, because the site meeting has been moved right at the very beginning, I'm not going to take any debate on the item, only that we move to uh, make a decision whether we have a site meeting or not. If the yes. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I mean, I would I supported the, the um, site visit because I think I appreciate you can look on Google Maps and everything, but I think to the effect that those two um, properties would ha have in the middle of that development on um, the Moat Lane properties is, is huge. Um, and it's very similar to the first um, item that we had, and it, it is really a, a backland development those two in the middle there, in my opinion. So I think it does need to be seen um, from the area to see the effect that it would have on those properties in Moat Lane. Thank you. Uh, so a site visit is simply an information gathering for the committee members itself. It's not a, a, a meeting of the, the committee, therefore it's not open to the public, it's actually just there to gather information in addition to what can we can be gleaned from the presentation and Google Maps, etc. So I'm going to put, um, ask the uh, Vice Chair to, oh, it's been recommended. So, so I'm going to ask members to vote upon the, the uh, site meeting, meeting. Those in favour of a site meeting.
That's 13, Chairman. Those against the site meeting? Okay. That's two, Chairman. So, site meeting it will be. Um, I will take an opportunity to discuss the, uh, the date and time of the site meeting uh, with the, through the normal channels, which is the, uh, through the spokes. Um, it has to be done before the next meeting, which is in four weeks' time. Ideally, it needs to be done the week before. Uh, we have quite a congested uh, ag um, agenda for members and training and such like, uh, so uh, be aware. Um, fair enough, um, I might be on holiday. Um, <laughs> but it is an information gathering exercise and we'll, we'll have taken an opportunity where and when we're going to meet. It's going to be um, relatively early, um, so I was for maybe six o'clock, um, uh, no later. Um, so we'll discuss that and come back to you and tell us as and when. So just to confirm, item eight has um, been essentially deferred for a site visit. And we move on to the next item. I should just quickly to say, just to remind people that items 9, 10 and 11 have been deferred um, to the next meeting uh, for the reasons laid out in the, uh, the, the addendum paper. Now, item 12, I've declared an interest because it's my place of work. So give me time to leave the room and uh, I hand over to the vice chair, who will now act as chair. Right, that now takes us to item number 12, if Dave Harris, hand over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application um, is at uh, Gillingham Business Park for Wasair, and it's for the replacement of an existing 2,000 litre nitrogen tank and installation of a 10,000 litre nitrogen tank. So th this shows that the, uh, the, the, the industrial unit is accessed through the business park through here, and currently, the existing uh, 2,000 litre nitrogen tank is just in that location there, and that's the adjacent residential properties. So these photographs are, are, are quite helpful, because you'll see from the photographs this structure in here, and shortly you'll see the size of that, and this is where the current 2,000 litre nitrogen tank is located, and you can see the separation from the residential here, and then where the proposed nitrogen tank is proposed to, to, to go and how it is further away from the boundary uh, and also to a degree masked by this existing tank that's there. So this is what I mean in terms of that tank will remain there. This is the existing 2,000 litre nitrogen tank which as you'll see from your, um, um, your report is three metres tall. Where it's proposed to go, which is in here, so that's existing, where it's proposed to go in here uh, it will be 7.4 metres tall. So if you look at, if that's three metres, then that can't be far off eight metres, something like nine metres. So it's going to be smaller than, 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 than that, or around about the same size uh, or as, as, as that. So that's the existing tank, that's the proposed tank, that's where it's proposed to be located. Um, our view in, de in design terms, it will be seen against um, the, the existing building, it will also be seen to the rear of that existing very large uh, tank just in there. We also, as you can see through here, it's quite a significant tree um, area separating from the, from the residential. So in visual amenity terms, its impact will be limited to negligible. There were some concerns regarding noise from the existing tank and concerns from residents of a possible increase in noise. 
Um, the applicants have indicated that noise was the issue of a fault um, and that no noise will, um, venting will occur with the new plant, but actually that it will, even so, it would still improve by being moved further away from residential, but the noise could be covered by the en Environment Protection Act anyway, should it be seen as, uh, as detrimental to, re to residential amenity. But as I said, it's an existing tank and it's a replacement of that. So in terms of um, residential amenity, it's acceptable, visual amenity, it's acceptable, and there are no highway impacts. And we're recommending, therefore, approval, subject to the two conditions as set out. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Dave. Um, if we go to Councillor Etheridge first, please. Thank you, Chairman. I fully support this application for one reason only. As has already been stated, we have already signed up to the climate emergency, and therefore the refilling of this tank will take two-thirds of, of, of vehicles off the road in, in, in terms of refilling it on a, on a regular basis. And on that basis alone, I'm more than happy to go forward. Thank you, Councillor Etheridge. If we go to Councillor Golvin, please. Could I ask a question? Are we talking about liquid nitrogen or compressed nitrogen? Uh, Chairman, I don't know the answer to that. Um, uh, we, I've considered in relation to the visual amenities of, of, of um, and, and residential amenities rather than what it uh, what it contains. So I, I don't know the answer, Councillor Goldwyn. Well, I think just looking at the photo, it's probably uh, compressed because liquid nitrogen um, is at a temperature of about minus 200 odd uh, degrees centigrade and it needs a huge amount of insulation. So I was uh, concerned about uh, the bulk of that insulation and you know, the, it's normally quite shiny and the rest of it, but I, I think Councillor Etheridge is, is, is right you know, by having a, a larger quantity stored on site. And we should also remember that uh, nitrogen is totally inert. In fact, you, know, you can use it to put out a fire, so yeah, it's, it's no issue. But it, I would be a little—I must admit—I would be a little bit concerned of having that volume of liquid nitrogen um, close to um, residential properties, because it, uh, if it should leak, there'll be a very large. Um, cloud of smoke to say the least and, and thank you uh, councillor lamis uh, thank you my question has been largely answered by adrian actually i wanted to know what what the gas it was um because purely because i think if people watching this who are concerned they want to know does this pose any additional risk to the safety of their homes and their well-being should there be an accident and I, I also think it's compressed nitrogen, so therefore I'm happy with Adrian's assurances that as it's in a, there is no additional risk to the health of the residents living there should there be an accident in the future. Chairman, if, I could, if it's okay, if I can just add to that, um, that, that I, I, I don't dispute what Councillor Lamas and, and Councillor Golvin has said. Uh, in terms of the storing of it, that's not, that falls outside the planning, uh, planning consideration uh, as it's controlled by the um, the, the GOSH re regulations, the control of substances hazard for health. So that would be the health and safety executive rather, rather than planning. But I, yeah. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? All right, I therefore hand over to the vice chair. Thank you. Thank you, chair. I move approval. Uh, with the conditions set out at the conclusion of the report, the two conditions which uh, um, the Barrow Planning Officer has mentioned. Right, we now go to the vote. Um, who's for approval of this application? That's 15, Chairman. That's therefore approved, thank you.
Um, item 13, um, Ms. Scala. Thank you, Chair. Um, before we start, could I just draw members' attention to the supplementary agenda, um, which has a copy of the parking survey um, as, um, as set out in page 123 of the agenda, as mentioned on page 123 of the agenda. So this application is uh, Riverview Lodge Guest House at 88 Borstal Road. Um, the location, this uh, property here is the guest house with the application site sitting to the side of, uh, of the guest house. The application proposed is for a detached four bedroom dwelling. Um, as you can see here, it's on the west side of Borstal Road and you can see it sits in a run of, of uh, residential dwellings here. Um, relatively mixed in, in nature in terms of being uh, detached and semi-detached properties. Um, I would just point out these properties on the opposite side of the road here, are up a uh, sloped access um, and are quite a, new, a newer development uh, called the Alps, uh, or the roads called the Alps. These properties actually sit behind quite a large wall and an embankment, you'll see on the photographs, but it, they're not actually visible, uh, particularly from the application site. So in terms of the site location, again, we can see that Riverview Lodge sits here um, and the application site is uh, just adjacent to the uh, uh, north. <coughs> um, and again, just an aerial photograph and you can see the size of the plot of the current property here. Um, there is a car park access um, for the guest house um, and then the site itself um, just sits there. So from the site photographs, this left photograph here, um, it shows you Riverview Lodge here as this sort of slightly yellowy, yellowy sort of uh, rendered building. Um, and we're looking south down the road. Um, and you can see sort of the residential properties in the building line here. Um, the sort of nature of some of these properties is just quite interesting, but we've got we've got two story semi uh, two story semi detached properties here. We've got the guest house here, which is detached property, and then you've got this adjacent property, which you'll see um, at the next slide. So this is the application site itself. This is where the house is proposed, and what you can see in this photograph um, on the side of the building at Riverview Lodge is this sort of bolt on fire escape um, that that is actually being removed as part of the application. Um, so just to sort of point out that this, this sort of bolt-on corrugated fire escape um, will be removed as part of the, the application. So again, this is just looking into the site in a bit more detail. And what we can see is where the garden falls away. I think it's sort of helpful to note when we're going to be looking at the um, layout of the house itself. Um, this uh, wall here that you can see on the right-hand side of this first photograph is the uh, corner of the flank wall to the adjacent property. And this next photograph shows that adjacent property here, which is um, a semi-detached property. And again, you can just see the building nature and the, and the line of the um, road itself. And again, what you can see here is, is on the opposite side of the road, there are no houses that front the road and they, the houses that are located are elevated and behind um, this uh, greenery. So again, just wider street scenes, um, the left-hand photo, Shows the property that sits next door but one to Riverview Lodge, uh, located south um, of, of Riverview Lodge. And then this property here is the slightly uh, more unusual property that is located directly south of Riverview Lodge. And these wider shots here on this left hand one, this is taken uh, from further north. You can see the building line here again um, the application site is sitting here with Riverview Lodge just poking above because it is slightly higher than the rest of the residential properties so you can see that the flank wall of Riverview Lodge there which is where the application site sits and this is a much uh, further further north up the road um, looking back down again but uh, just demonstrating the building line that sits um, within um, Bostel Road. So what we have here now um, are the existing imposed ele elevations. So this top elevation, we can see um, the existing fireplace or fire escape, sorry, that is in place um, on uh, Riverview Lodge. And we can see the adjacent semi-detached property. 
um, with this uh, proposed um, elevation here, just showing obviously in terms of the height and scale of the building with the gable frontage and how that sits in relation to the adjacent properties. Again, what I will point out here is um, we've got a two-storey house, um, completely in character in terms of, uh, of a height, height with the neighbouring properties. You'll see some uh, roof, win roof windows here, some Velux windows, um, but you can see that there's a garage entrance here into the site. Just turning your attention now to these uh, sectional drawings which show the garden falling away. So this is the fence line um, here at the front of the property and what we can see is currently the garden, as with the rest of the road, the garden does slope down towards the rear. So when we're looking at a section of the house, the entrance and the garage, which is shown on that proposed street scene elevation, is actually here. And what is proposed is a lower ground floor level which then would open out into the garden that drops away. So from the rear of the property, um, and also these roof lights here um, are serving a, a, a dormer that's proposed in the rear. So we have a two-storey property at the front, but at the rear with the lower ground floor and the dormer, you can see that that looks uh, like a larger property from the rear as it drops away. So again, this is the front elevation, showing you the entrance in. The side elevation here, you'll see that there are some windows. It is um, these, what these windows serve is set out within the report, but they are generally um, for non-habitable spaces or secondary light, um, which is also for these landings, hallways and, and non-habitable non spaces, and it is proposed through condition that they are opaque. Um, and then what we've got here is the lower ground floor opening out into the garden area with the ground and first floor, and then we've got the dormer feature at the, at the rear, which is the master bedroom. And again, in terms of uh, floor plans, the entrance level at the front of the property is the ground floor plan. So you can see the garage space on the, on the ground floor. And then it goes down into what is the main living space for the property, which then serves, opens out and onto the garden. You've got a sitting area on the, on the ground floor. And then you go up to three bedrooms and a, and a bathroom. And then within the uh, roof space, there's the master and the ensuite. So just to show you the layout again, as you can see, this is the entrance in, but the garden has been treated because of the slopes. There are some steps within the garden um, and you can see here that this is where it sits. It's uh, quite similar in terms of its relationship, in terms of the garden length, in terms of how the garden slopes away. It sits in relation to the properties there. Um, as set out in the report, this application is recommended for approval subject to conditions. Uh, is considered to be in suitable location, given that it is within the urban area of uh, Rochester or Borstal. Um, the proposal is considered to be in keeping with the overall street scene in terms of scale and appearance, and it complies with national housing standards and is also considered satisfactory in terms of parking provision, um, including the survey that was within the uh, supplementary. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Open up to members. Uh, Councillor Etheridge. Thank you, Chairman. On, thank you, Chairman. Within the report on page 123, second paragraph down, there was a recommendation that per per permitted development rights be removed with regard to the change of use between uh, classes C3 and C4. Is it possible to have that as a condition, please, as part of this uh, application going forward for, for approval? If not, in terms of the recommendation made by the Vice Chair, uh, that recommendation is referred to. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's actually in condition eight as pointed out by Mr. Harris to me. My apologies, Chair, I need to pause it back in the Councillor Galvin. Thank you, Chairman. Not really got a problem with this. Um, I, th I think it's. Uh, a useful infill. Um, it, it's you know, it could provide more more housing within the urban area. It's good. I must admit, I'm I'm a little bit curious about the fire escape. I'm glad to see it's going. Uh, when I looked, I was going through the agenda this afternoon and looked on Google Maps and dropped the little chappy down to have a look at street level. Uh, it looked like somebody had chopped off the ends of four or five uh, shipping containers and stacked them up on the side of the building. It really did look appalling. Uh, how uh, did they get away with that? Um, 
do you not need planning permission for, for a fire escape? But if, um, if we, I wonder if uh, Mr. Harris, you could answer. And also, I presume the fire escape is there because the um, building is a, a guest house and requires a, that as a means of uh, egress in, in, in emergency. So if that's done away with, are they going to give it up as a guest house? And if they are going to put another fire escape around the back, can we make sure um, if they do have, have a replacement, it's not an abomination like is there at the moment? Because I was quite happy to go along with it on the grounds that we actually hide the thing from the street scene. But how do we get in this situation, Mr Harris, in this awful thing in, in a residential street? I'm not quite sure that's pertinent to the application itself. I mean, it's nice to know the history of it. Um, I'm sure if it's, it's a guest house, there are regulations that have to be met under, the, uh, under fire regulations. Um, so I'm going to move to Councillor Bowen. Yeah, I have a question too, um, which might not be pertinent either, but um, are they redeveloping the existing building? So, so the, the, are they developing the existing building? The, um, the guest lodge, is anything being done with that? Again, it's not, it's not relevant to yeah, the application. Okay. Uh, we're only considering what the um, application is in front of us. Um, Anybody else wish to uh, speak? Okay. I'm going to move to the Vice Chair to um, move the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this planning application. It's in keeping with the appearance and character of the area. Um, so as per the recommendation, um, I move the recommendation to approve the application subject to conditions 1 to 11 on the main papers. Um, and I move this for approval. Uh, uh, second that, uh, Chairman, note, note the supplementary agenda item as well. Thank you. Yeah, okay. So those in favour of approval? That's 16, Chairman. Excellent. So item 13 has been approved and moved to um, item 14. Mr Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, as uh, stated on the papers, this application is for the raising of the roof height and construction of a single storey extension to the front side and Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um, yes, uh, construction of single storey extension to the front side and rear, together with photovoltaic panels to the side and rear of the existing property. So that's that property just there. Together with the construction of a detached property with photovoltaic panels to the rear and associated parking adjacent to the existing dwelling. Well, as you can see, this is a detached property set in a very large plot completely out of character with what is in the surrounding area, which is quite a mix of uh, de t uh, detached, but quite tight detached properties and terrace properties. But understandably, members, you'll see that that's recognized that, that character, and you'll see from the planning history that in 2017, planning permission was granted for the construction of a three bedroom detached dwelling on the site. And you can see that that permission was implemented. And that's that property. Or, or the, the foundations for the property laid, laid there with the access um, through here. Now, number 60 is not here. Number 60 is actually this property just here, and that's number 58, uh, uh, just, just, just there. So, members, that they could continue with building that approval that they've already got. And this is the approval. So that's the existing dwelling just in here. And this is the approved dwelling that you saw the foundations for and the chalet bungalow that was approved going through there. So front, here, rear, uh, uh, just, in, just in there. And then they hear these Velux roof, roof lights serving or helping to provide additional light within the roof space. 
So we can see the entrance to the site, that existing building in there. Okay, and that's that entrance there. You can see the trees along the frontage. And you can see the, uh, the, the general character of the area, which is very, very mixed. And those are the existing elevations of the, um, of the, 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 the property there. Now, there's certain things that you should be aware of in relation to this, these slides. Firstly, there is existing front and side and rear extensions. So that's that, the, the, rear, the rear extension there. Side extension going through here, wrapping round to the, uh, the, to, to the front. But also, these note these lines here, because that notes the floor, uh, ground floor ceiling of the ground floor um, and the floor level of the first floor. And that is then the ceiling of the first floor. So you can see what is above the height of that. So we go through to the, floor, the, the elevations of the proposed, uh, sorry, the, um, the extension to the existing property. So again, these are the same lines. So you can see they follow the, uh, the, the, the ridge height. So that's the ceiling of the first floor. And you can see that you've then got this new roof, hipped roof above it. We have the single story extension to the front, wrapping around to the side and then to the rear. So that there is the front and side extension. That's the front extension, side extension, the rear extension just in there, removing those old tack tacky uh, extensions which previously existed, and then putting a, effectively a new floor um, there at, at first floor. So there was previously first floor accommodation as it was a chalet bungalow, but they're raising um, the height of it to effectively make it a two-story house. And then we have the adjacent new dwelling where they're proposing a two-story house, again, um, as opposed to the previous approval for a chalet bungalow. And again, you can see the design very much reflects what they're proposing for the, um, for the existing um, property. So that's the existing property there. That's the proposed property just in there. And this, I, I think, helps us to, to consider the siting and the impact on the neighbouring properties. So you've got number 60 here, and then you've got those properties to the rear just in there. So this shows the siting of what's already been approved with that view forward to the rear, the existing property with the view forward and, and rear there, and then how it relates to those adjacent properties. So that's the new property slightly reorientated, so around just this, this, this way a little bit um, um, here, so facing front and, and, and back, but the distances here and here are acceptable in terms of uh, privacy distances that we would, we, we would normally recommend. In terms of design, we feel it adds to the mix and the character of the area. Um, and in car parking terms, the access, existing access there already been approved to serve two properties and there is plenty of car parking on the site. So Chairman, recommending approval subject to the conditions as set out in the report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Uh, any member? Councillor Etheridge. Thank you, Chairman. For quick clarification, I can find the um, condition regarding to change of use, but I can't see the one in regards to further expansion of the property. <coughs> If you can just point that out to me. Yeah, of course. Uh, thank, thank you, Councillor Etheridge. Um, as you quite rightly pointed out, the change of use is covered by Condition 10 and the removal of permitted development rights is covered under Condition 9. Thank you very much. Any other member? Councillor Barrett. Thank you. Um, I'm very familiar with the site there because it's very close to my home. Uh, it is a very large site, and I can think it can well accommodate two dwellings as opposed to the one. Um, the only concern, and I have no concern about the height, because there's the surrounding properties are of similar height, whereas at the moment it's less like a small bungalow in the middle of a large area. Um, but the um, access to it, I don't know whether it's where it is at the present time, but it's a very busy junction where people are cutting through from the um, motorway through the service station and uh, the junction at Tyler Drive and Mearscourt Road. Uh, it is very, uh, very busy at all times 
uh, with high speed vehicles going through. So I don't know whether it's the same access that they're using or it's, you know, it's been differed in any way. Just clarify that, Mr. Harris. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, this is the, exi the existing access uh, to, to the site, which has got the approval for the, the, the existing property and the proposed property uh, ju just in there. Um, and you can see it's been assessed by our highways officer and they consider that the visibility, and you can see from the views here, um, is acceptable for two properties. Thank you. If not, uh, move to the vice chair. Thank you, Chair. I move the recommendation to approve the application subject to conditions 1 to 11 in the main papers um, for approval. Happy to second that, Chairman. Those in favour of uh, the recommendation? That's 16, Chairman. So item 14 has been approved. Move on to item 15. This is a resubmission of a previous application. I think the main change is that it's moved ward. Uh, Mr. Harris. Thank you, thank you, Chairman, for, for that. As you quite rightly point out, there, there is a planning history, um, uh, uh, this, which I will show on the, on the, on the plans. The most recent refusal in March of, of, of this year. So this is the, um, the, the pizza place just, just in here. And you will see that we've got the Mercedes car dealer, a, quite a modern contemporary design uh, in there. And that, this is the existing property for, for, for the pizza place in here. And the adjacent property set further forward and then car parking serving the pizza place and the, and the offices above just in there. Now the proposal is to, to effectively construct a two and a half story extension to the front to provide for further space for the takeaway at ground floor level and then office space at first floor um, with, a, with, a, with a mezzanine as well. And then roof lights and solar panels to the roof on the street view. But it's a very modern, uh, design, as you will see from the, uh, the the plan. So that's that existing property, quite innocuous, um, nothing special or, or any quality about it at all. Um, the adjacent Mercedes um, car showroom, contemporary, um, quite I think it's quite eye-catching. I think it highlights the um, uh, the area and draws your attention to the fact that something is there of some and, and of some merit uh, within it. This has, has, has no benefit or, or no outstanding uh, credence at all. And then we have the adjacent property uh, just in there, which is set slightly further forward. So in terms of the proposed layout, you'll see that they're proposing to move it further forward so it's level with that adjacent property. But, and, and then at ground floor, you have that. And then up at first floor, you have this additional office, accom uh, office accommodation. And then, sorry, on, on the roof level, you will have the, um, uh, the roof lights and then the, uh, uh, the photovoltaic just in there. So two-dimensional doesn't look great, but that's because it's two-dimensional. But it, what it's trying to show here is the height relevance compared to the, the properties next door. And then you can see that the design just in, uh, just in there. Now, this was the refused scheme and members, in your report on page 143, that scheme was refused by virtue of its height, height and forward projection would result in an unduly prominent and over-dominant appearance, detrimental to the character and the appearance of the area. And rather than take that to appeal, the applicants have said, OK, we understand, members, uh, your, your, your concerns here. How can we reduce that? We, we feel that we want to come forward. It doesn't take it further forward than that adjacent property. But let's reduce that dominance of it by taking the height down. So we still have the photovoltaics through here. We have a reduced number. Uh, and then we have these uh, roof, roof lights th through here. But we're reducing the ridge from that height more to something comparable with the adjacent property. And that's what you see. So that's the scheme that members refused. And this is the, the reduced scheme that you're now considering. So they've very much reduced the height of it. Um, still keeping the ridge 
um, the, 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 the pitch, because that is then um, comparable to the adjacent property here. But just having this flat roof part uh, in there, which will not be apparent from the, from the street scene, um, uh, but does reduce the, 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 the height of it and seeks to address that concerns that members had regarding the, the prominence and over-dominant appearance. Um, we feel it sits comfortably with the contemporary design of the, of the car showroom here, provides a pretty good contemporary design, uh, di design here, which um, we feel enhances the street scene. And members, chairman, recommending approval now with the conditions one to six as set out. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Harris. Um, I think it's a better design than it was. Um, any member? I want to call you Douglas, but I shouldn't really call you Douglas, you say. Uh, because of Hannah Ish. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, just in keeping with um, encouraging employment within the area and, and also in keeping with the contemporary design of its neighbour, the Mercedes Benz dealership, and working with employers to produce designs that not only can encourage more people to want to partake and work for, for such a company, I think it's important and attracting customers as well. Um, in terms of the throughput, are there made any provisions for the additional footfall that, that will be hopefully forthcoming with the design? Mr. Harris. Chairman, in terms of design, it's a more attractive entrance in terms of, 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 of this area in here, in terms of encouraging the uh, people to come into, in, into the entrance. The car parking uh, remains unchanged from the, um, uh, the, 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 the existing here, uh, which serves both the, the, the takeaway um, and, and the office above, if that's helpful, Councillor. I, 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 sorry, I think so, but it just doesn't really address the expected increase in footfall if they're not made any provisions for that. I'm sorry. So, uh, Chairman, it's still only the one takeaway, so it's um, it's just providing for a more enhanced um, area at the um, uh, at the ground floor there. So it's still one 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 takeaway rather than two, and we've got a condition which re um, restricts it being subdivided to to address to to to, uh, to address that point you've said about uh, foot footfall, Councillor. Um, uh, and then the car parking, as I said, remains remains to the side there, but the entrance to it is is enhanced. Um, but it's just still the one takeaway. Thank you. Okay, any other member wishes to speak? <coughs> if not, I'll move to the Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. I move the recommendation to approve the application subject to conditions one to six um, on the main papers, all for the reasons set out in the report. Thank you. Chair, I second exactly what Councillor Stamper said. Okay. So, those in favour of the recommendation? That's 16, Chairman. <coughs> so, item 15 has been approved. So, let's move to the last item, and which is item 16. 37 Cranmere Court in my ward. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this is an application for a construction of a two-storey detached dwelling together with two parking bays and a refuse storage area. And it's a resubmission of uh, an application in 2022, which was um, refused under delegated powers. So this is uh, uh, Cranmere Court. Sorry, Cram yeah, Cranmere Court through, through, through here. So you've got Commissioner's Road running down there, Medway City Estate just in here, the river here. And you can see this is the, the, the railway line uh, and Strood Station just here, going through to the tunnel around about this point here. This is the application site, existing property here, and it's garden to the side and to the rear. And you can start to see that in terms of garden size, you've got... It, with the removal of this side garden, you still leaves a garden of comparable size to those ones, the other uh, properties on, on, on the terrace uh, in here, serving the, the, the existing property. 
The existing property has two parking spaces in here. This terrace of five here has parking within this court and in this area just there. The proposal is to, to access the site through that, that, that parking court and to serve a property just in there. So that's that parking court that I was referring to, two parking spaces serving the existing property just in here. Now the, the refuse scheme was for a, a house which we didn't consider was reflective of the character of, of, of the area um, in terms of the way it was laid out and designed through there, but also through the external elevations. And the reason for that refusal is set out on page 155 of your report, that the detached dwelling, by reason of its design, scale and orientation, would result in a development that fails to provide a clear positive improvement to the environment, appearing contrived and cramped within the plot. The proposal also fails to maintain the open character of the area by reason of its orientation. So that's the existing scheme. The terrace here and here have hipped roofs, so you'll see that on the photo, so have hip roofs in here, while this had gable ends, and it also had a large dormer within the roof space. And we just felt that was out of character, and then occupying the majority of the frontage of the plot here. What's proposed is a property which is hip to all sides, more reflective of the, the, the hip to the terrace here and the hips to the terrace there in terms of roof, but also reorientated. So you have this space just in here to, to maintain that openness. There'll be two parking spaces <coughs> just in there. So that's the scheme that was refused, as you can see. Gable ended um, with a large box dormer to, to the rear. We just felt this was of a poor quality in terms of its design. Would do nothing for the appearance of the area. The proposed property, you can see by having a, a hipped roof, is far more reflective of the character of, of the area there. And also by that reorientation, provides a greater spacing between the properties there, uh, which uh, helps the character of the area. And that's how it sits on the site, just in here. Now, the comments from British Rail, um, or Network Rail, I should say. Network Rail, thank you, thank you, right. Chairman. I have gone back in time, showing my age there, Chairman. Um, from Network Rail, they're not objecting, but they just want to protect their rights, and they are therefore requiring the, uh, the applicant to contact them prior to commencement of development of the sites so that they can make sure that they can protect their, their, uh, their areas of interest. Um, we are aware of the, uh, the, the noise from the railway itself, uh, and therefore condition 14 would require the applicants to provide more information uh, in terms of a scheme to protect the occupiers of the proposed dwelling from rail-related noise and vibration. And Chairman, subject to the, uh, the 14 conditions, we're recommending approval. I would just point out that on your report, it says condition three, is, uh, it, that should be condition one, two, three, obviously not three, two, three. Um, but other than that amendment, Chairman, recommending approval. Thank you. Any member? No? It's interesting to, to me is that the ward member White was never developed in the first place because the, the, the developer was wards, if I remember correctly. And they were always keen to develop every square inch, so I'm not quite sure what it's left. It's actually, there's a space next to it as well. Um, the noise, of course, is the fact that the trains are much quieter now, I have to say, but the noise only is, is mainly due to the, the, the very sharp bend from the tunnel into station. Okay, so move to the Vice Chair. Thank you, Chair. I move the recommendations to approve the application subject to the conditions numbered 1 to 14 on the main papers, all for the reasons set out in the report. Thank you. Chair, I second that, and if I can just clear up uh, the Barrow Planning Officer's confusion about the title of the railway company. It was called British Rail when I was last on the planning committee, I think. What was that, prior to nationalisation? <laughs> um, those in favour of the recommendation? That's 16, Chairman. 
So item 15 is approved, and that is essentially the end of the meeting. Can I thank everybody for coming and being patient? Uh, we've got a, a large learning curve to do, um, and I think it's a good start. Uh, so we've maybe fumbled our way a little way through it, but we, we got there in the end. And we can get back for the second half. That was the criteria Mr. Harris gave me at the beginning. Um, I'm, so just regarding the site meeting, by the way, um, as I said, that's going to be result, uh, lovely done before the next meeting. It's, I would suggest it's on a, as it's light, um, of an evening, and probably um, about six-ish. Um, but uh, maybe members could just give a view of that to, 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 our, to the, Mr. Harris directly, but to Mr. Councillor Etheridge. I'm more than happy to uh, call in with whatever arrangements you make with council. Okay. Two o'clock in the morning is then. Okay. <laughs> and you can treat us to coffee across the road. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much.